Here I've summarized the cell phone and the FM and AM radio system operating frequencies and ranges. You may have noticed a trend. Very generally, for these three examples, as the frequency decreased, then the ranges increased. So one possibility is that we, we may be able to just continue lowering the operating frequency in order to increase the range. If the range can be large enough, we wouldn't need very many transmitters in order to have global coverage for the geolocation system. And the range of the transmitter could also cover the world's oceans. Later, we will discuss the physics of this design challenge in more detail. For now, let's just move forward with the assumption that we will likely want to model a vertical transmitter above the ground. So here's the antenna, and here's the ground, just as you saw for the AM and F the AM transmitter example. And the operating frequency will likely be quite a bit lower. So F here is going to be lower uh, than 1 megahertz we are anticipating. Since the geometry of this problem will likely involve a vertical transmitter over the ground, it seems that we will not be able to get away with a one-dimensional FDTD grid for this study, even just to help us get started as we did for the last design challenge. We've seen that a one-dimensional FDTD grid involves two field components, one electric field and one magnetic field. If we were to expand the one-dimensional grid to 3D, it would look like this cube. This is what's called a Yi grid cell. It's named after Kane Yi, the founder of FDTD. If we draw any straight line through this Yi cell, then we would get alternating electric and magnetic field components as we had for the one-dimensional grid that we used earlier. In fact, the line through the center of the top panel of this cube, so along this direction right here, has the EZ and the HY components that we previously modeled. So if you imagine a whole bunch of these cubes in a line, we would have alternating EZs and HYs in the X direction. But it would be nice if we didn't have to go straight to 3D for this design challenge. So since we can't use a one-dimensional grid, let's see if we can use a two-dimensional grid. For a 2D grid, we would be modeling a plane of this 3D cube, such as one of the faces of the cube, for example, or a horizontal or vertical slice through the center of it. You can see that the faces of this cube, or any slice through it, involves three different field components. For example, a 2D slice across the front of this cube would mean that we would have EX, because there's an EX component here, components, and HY components, there's one of those on the bottom and on the top, and then also HZ components. How can we decide which orientation and field components to include in a two-dimensional model for this design challenge? 